Yeah, those are earthly accomplishments that are absolutely and, and comprehensively and entirely irrelevant in the grander scheme of heaven because all those things have been brought into your camp, Kasadan. So, I get the value more, Nana, over Umundotli say in daughter, and also over Umfazi that got everything in business. Yake yonke, I'm at lines, wake wonke, or a hoki legarinko using spirits like this one. Oh, wa. Sense where I'm concerned and try to make me envy. Declines are high. Something like 75 to 80% of them. Uh, what in the world? I mean, I, that's not life. So when people are trying to make you envy them, when that's how they get wealth, that's how they get success. I'm sorry. Grander scheme of things. We need to look at things in terms of the grander scheme of things. Like, what are we looking at eternally? What is really truly work? What is really truly achievement? You know, people that are into witchcraft, the sad and disquieting thing about them is that they can never even, the sad and disquieting thing about them is that they, they can never even, uh, what do you call this, truly enjoy their achievements or their accomplishments because of the fact that there will always be a sense of insecurity concerning the acquisition of them in the climate of people who are organically working for what it is that they want. So everybody that is actually pushing and striving and actually studying and actually networking and actually trying to knock on doors and make opportunities available for themselves envy they will always envy a person that is an organic talent somebody that is actually working to get what they want and that's why they invest in so much witchcraft against everyone that's why they also have so much envy so much covetousness against everyone relax please Oh, okay, is somebody being dropped off? South Africa has got such a high crime rate that you never know when a car is stopping behind you why they're doing that. Um, they could be actually just trying to like snatch a phone or something. You know what I'm saying? Don't pack a holy spirit like what? Flying kick. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, that's why they're so covetous. They, they have a very bad problem with envy because they're not the real deal they're not the real deal like there usually is somebody who is better than them there is somebody who is growing hunter like normally just gradually steadily somebody that is succeeding steadily that however is not at their level somebody that is not at their level and this person is not at their level for no other reason than the fact that they are organically growing and this person is stealing their clientele so they will always envy them they will pass them shade they will give them so much grief they will do the most they will do some of the strangest things to them precisely because by Azuguti, if at all they know that if, they, if, if at all they were to stop uh, using spells on the left would slay me she would take all my clients they know that ujabu utemba on the left on the left so that was my other left <laughs> on the left ulerato on the left would take all my clients if I stopped using witchcraft and Ujabu no Temba on the right would basically bring a close, a shut down to my entire business if I stopped using Imit. They know that. Like they know it in a, in a way. They know that they know that they know that some of their businesses would literally be until liquidation. They would become obsolete. They would go in the ground. They would crash and they would burn if they stopped using Imit. Because there are people on the left and on the right of them up and down that are so much better. That are however struggling. Uh, you see it all the time on YouTube like I don't know if you've come across perhaps you have you likely have if you are a viewer of videos on YouTube I would also happen to be one of such channels people that you watch the content of and then you look at the views and you look at the subscriber count and you are like this is an unsung channel you should have more people watching you you should have more people listening to you 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 go into blogs and you read and you're like you should have more people liking this you literally basically their sales are not where they're supposed to be given the quality of their work well lavandu lava they steal people's views if it's if it all is to youtube for instance they will steal your subscribers and they will steal your views using magic they will cause people's attention to be drawn to their content and not so much yours and so you're going to then find yourself struggling to grow a channel 
when you are organically growing it and so after a couple of months a couple of years you will still be sitting under 10,000 subscribers type thing while some person that's largely kind of fluffy and their content is okay but it's not so great that you would understand why after just two years they're sitting on two million subscribers you you deal with a situation of that nature and all you do as a you as a YouTube viewer is just you brush it off as a whatever I guess this is life you know some people like this um, more some people you can see why they've got such big channels because they're actually really good at what they do and you can see how they've amassed for themselves that kind of crowd Maraguna my channels in Delay YouTube in that in Jefela Buffy again Jogyosala just to get poured onto uh, everybody's likes everybody's uh, subscriptions uh, type establishment thing yeah these people do that and they are aware now but when they watch content like mine when they watch content like the content I'm speaking about like yesterday I was watching the content uh, skincare content of, of this one doctor uh, right now I've got this like hyperpigmentation problem Lana where it is that my face went a little bit dark because of a loss of products that I've been using due to a lack of money but i've recently been able to get money again so the hyperpigmentation is fading um you probably can see that i'm slightly darker here than everywhere else on my face yeah so i was watching this uh, i was watching this this one doctor lady explaining how to deal with um an even skin tone and a, a problem with hyperpigmentation and this woman's content is so excellent right and i i've been listening i've been watching her for the past two to three nights just like basically oh oh it's a bird it's not a, a frog i have a thing about frogs oh my goodness see your can't deal okay yeah uh, i've been watching a whole bunch of her content she she is um she's a lady that if she was south african she would be regarded as indian okay uh she she looks kind of middle eastern or something if she was in this country we'd call her indian proper but she could be Arabic, I don't know. But she's actually in Europe, right? She's rather in Europe right now. And uh, her content, she produces uh, skincare for women of color, right? And so that's why I was drawn to her channel. She's really good. I forgot her name. I would actually recommend her to you, but I, I don't know. I forgot her name, whatever, yeah. Anyway, this lady has got such excellent content, right? I've, I've, I've listened to lots of skincare videos before and hers literally, like, it takes the trophy so far. Um, yeah, but she does not get very, like, after two years of having uploaded something, she'll have maybe, like, 50,000 views on a video. She'll have maybe, like, you know, 45,000, 30,000 views on, on videos. And I'm like, and her video and her content is, is high, high, high quality. She's got really high quality content. But then the same kinds of videos across other face care content creators, other skincare content creators is even those that aren't even qualified doctors. Yeah, guys, like it's, it's basically struggling. Her content is struggling in comparison to other content creators, but it's ex it's um it's excellent also in comparison to other content creators within the same niche. And that is the kind of stuff that it's organic growth. She's growing naturally. Do you understand what I'm saying? Her content is growing naturally. Uh without anything helping her along spiritually. And you can see it because there are people who are not as good as her who are out here amassing within just four days of uploading content hundreds of thousands of views on similar content that however does not have the depth of knowledge depth of understanding and does not cause you to have ease of comfort basically concerning taking the advice type thing and then you ask yourself why is this woman not doing so well the answer in 2024 is obvious the answer is boloyi like so many content creators are involved in dark hours they've been invited to funny little meetings and strange things and so therefore now they're signing their souls over to the devil just to sell products online and just to have businesses running businesses thriving and to proliferate their own agenda make themselves little mini celebrities and when 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 these people are growing inorganically when these people are growing inorganically then they will always have some kind of fear in their bones over this woman that out here is doing the same content but like she's so much better than so many other content creators if at all all these other people using spells to draw similar uh viewers so viewers within the same niche if at all people also trying to look out for a, a women of color or people of color skincare if they were to stop doing witchcraft in their own channels to bring people to their content this lady's channel was suddenly mushroom it was suddenly Persian she was suddenly get such astronomical views that everybody would wonder all along Gandim Sadi Ona where was she that's exactly what I'm talking about that's the reason why after the rapture happens 
essentially Christian con Christian content creators become like dead celebrities whose videos all of a sudden whose uh, what is it, uh, dingy, albums all of a sudden start to sell it's because people are going to stop being shallow and they're going to resist witchcraft they're going to resist the operating spells because they're going to want the truth and so they're going to break past the barriers right now people are sleeping they're being lulled to sleep by witchcraft spells but witchcraft spells like i said and i will keep saying this they work by suggestion so basically you don't have to do what the witch says you must do but it comes highly recommended that you should do it so you can choose not to listen to entities that's whispering into your ear a lot of people don't ignore entities they don't ignore them they just hearken and they run with the narrative and so they find themselves in the in the wave of the tsunami wave of of, of, of of occult magic however once the rapture has happened people are going to exercise self-control and they're going to realize that they were deceived and so they're going to start ignoring that which is a demonic suggestion so people whose content was not being viewed uh who was who were not being getting who were not getting taken up they're suddenly going to get taken up content creators that you never would have listened to will all of a sudden be the people that you're listening to on a loop and i did say that um after the rapture a couple of months is going to progress before they bring down christian content and that's going to be enough time for people to download it off the internet transcribe it make it paperback and also therefore have it once the real heat of the tribulation starts to uh, hit them type establishment thing which one is responsible for a lot of um why it is that some of the best content creators that you have happened upon that are unsung however on youtube are what they are it is because witchcraft witches in the same niche have stolen their audience that woman on youtube with the face care um channel it's clear like it's so obvious that i i'd like here but you see i have an eye to see and an ear to hear so therefore such things are easy for me to detect while others however will just be like huh she should have more views and just move on and you're not going to read anything into it so cousin in this vapid woman alongside uh basically both these cousins of mine that are trying to make me envy their lives in one way fashion or whatever or either yeah they have acquired or amassed for themselves that which is their present clout with magic and soon the rapture is going to happen and the carpet is going to the, the, the blanket is going to be ripped off their bodies and the world is going to see for what it is what under heaven it is that they were god by law with tulitidis is not going to even make it to the rapture because she's going to die before then in a car accident and however her death is not still going to be enough to convict people that i was right what's going to convict people of the truth of when i'm speaking is the rapture Lomo Nyelo, that is like judas one other chance she has a shot just like even the one vele vele or what to they all have a chance if they repent like there's nobody here that god has just left a reprobate out on a limb indefinitely without any kind of a louver of escape or an olive branch they can repent but and from what I saw with my cousin, she's just not going to. Okay, Mara the 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 blooper, the blooper one. <laughs> she did not even have to be to face this kind of judgment if she did not come into Jagatya Kohesu and start doing stuff. Like she basically invited a premature death on her person, and if she does not repent, she's not even going to make it to the rapture. But having acquired much of her wealth much of her anything at all using witchcraft that kind of stuff is going to ultimately have a carpet ripped from it the, the, the rapture is going to evidence anything and this chick has acquired everything of hers with witchcraft and when you are like that you will envy everything that has got legs that can walk anything that can breathe anything that can talk you will envy it because you know that if you stop doing what you're doing honey if you stop doing what you're doing your business it's gonna tank if you stop what doing what you're doing your uh what do you call this your clients they're gonna leave for next door if you stop doing what you're doing basically every if you stop chasing your husband uzok divorce that's what makes them envy the living daylights out of people who are organically in love people who are organically working for businesses people who are organically basically when you are the real deal not cutting corners bunnies on their linda yoguti and katama corner because they know that if they stop doing spells piddling up so cousin do a vestigial organ i i dare you to dwell a bit i literally dare you to carry on 
I was not supposed to do a video guys you can to relax like share content but this is the last time that I'm going to say anything to you do you understand it's the last time I'm going to raise anything concerning you because you're that unimportant and that irrelevant I get in witchcraft you're trying to give me to make me come back to corporate First and foremost, I can never work for you. So I get to go with a long monomara. Please, but how? But how? Make sure your secretary or your whatever's your HR. Baskang phone la girl. Baskang phone la because you are trying to cause them to call me and me reject that opportunity so that my mom, you can tell her. But even if you do do that, because I am not going to do that because I am not going to do to break me when she is at relative peace Linda. my mom has been getting used by all of you for long enough for her to continue to let this happen she needs me you know what I'm saying so she's not going to easily just let me go she's not going to just easily down the road because when the relationship between us is strained her life is in some kind of a bunch too but if you dare come through if you uh, this is what's good I get told any phone call in Jefela I'm going to ignore it because right now I don't know anybody that's calling me for a job there's nothing that's going on so I'm just gonna ignore all the calls coming through so that your people cannot reach me and then if they leave a voice message I will pretend I didn't get it so as to ascertain to make doubly sure or you don't offer me a job because you are literally trying to set me up for failure I cannot work for an enemy of the cross and Umuntu that has used witchcraft to try and control how far I go or but the offer of a job opportunity to me to make me look like I'm irresponsible when it is rather you you want to absolve yourself from the obvious indiscretion on your part of make or basically giving me a job and then rescinding you want to make yourself like that's not what you were doing look like that and you also want to make it look as if though you were indecisive and it took you a long time to make a decision concerning me but now you have made a decision and now you're calling me you're trying to defend this about what you've been doing I am warning you not to do it First of all, you are trying to make me fall pregnant out of wedlock by just about anything that can have manhood. And then secondly, you are trying to get my mom to, to kick me out of the house. So I will not have a comfortable place that I live at that has got Wi-Fi. And thirdly, you are trying to get me that job because you are aware that if at all I can focus on doing some stupid job in corporate, I will then not focus so much on ministry and you are also trying to absolve guilt from your own name by giving me Musebeti that you rescinded I go badly if I'm gonna get a job if at all I'm going to get Musebeti I'm going to get Musebeti through God I'm going to get Musebeti through an opportunity that the Lord availed me I am going to get a job the organic way I will apply I'm going to get a job the organic way I'm sorry I just love music I know I can treat you better than he can. I'm sorry. Anyway, whatever. Uh, you are trying everything in your crazy power to make me look irresponsible. And happy. if God is going to give me a job, he's going to give me a job organically because I prayed to him. He's not going to give me a job through your witchcraft. You don't get to patch up. That's basically what I'm getting at. That's what I wanted to say. The sun has set on me. I don't really have anything else to say. I think I've said everything that I needed to say. But frankly, this here is true. There is no end to their psychosis. Because then, don't say I didn't warn you. Like a tick. Like something is something different. Where I am concerned. But if you don't want to, whatever all the best leaving your daughter orphaned that's what i'm saying i'm signing out in christ's name Quen K. peace actually no you know what like <laughs> yeah i just wanted to be done because you know i just wanted to be done given that this is an interlude but i'm not actually done i want you to understand why i keep one to because i think it um uh, it creates an impact some kind of a oomph a gumption a push you know what I mean? When I tell you the dreams that I got to help you understand why what God is showing me. Essentially, what this cousin is trying to do, right? So you can understand, but to Basatani, like Cain, when when Cain is busy at doing what Cain does, ha a bogile, ale Cain, right? 
He cannot exercise a squelch self-control over envy over his brother. But Cain is equal. After killing his brother Abel, we we know from the scriptures that Megasabukbulalwa, he was scared to get killed and basically was like, no, if I go out there in the wilderness, I'm going to get killed. Like the guy just killed his brother. And now he is scared in the Ayman, the situation, I need to deal with it. Now, no, now he's scared to face Lisu in and of himself. And then he's like, God, 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 uh, they're going to kill me out there. And then the Lord is like, I'm going to put a mark on your body so that nobody kills you, blah, blah, blah. So Cain is a coward that is fleeing from anyone that could kill him. But oh, how quick he is to kill some people out in these streets. He is quick to kill Abel. Do you understand? This chick, just like Cain, is a coward to endure the ramifications of her actions and for her to be clearly and overtly that which she obviously is. A saboteur, ins insincere about Jesus, and an afflictor of Christ's true disciple. She is posing as a child of God, but isn't. So now she is plotting and scheming. Mutoona does not want to exercise self-control over Monawahai and it was indeed that very decision that very inability sorry to exercise self-control over her envy that made her offer me a job and then rescind it she literally tried to get me to stop posting on my YouTube channel like she thoroughly imagined she could rock up and cause me to make that decision to walk away from ministry because she gave me a job as an assistant like y'all it's it's bizarre what this woman was trying to do right Mara, that's the thing about people especially people that are to be afflicting god's sons and daughters every so often they snap out of whatever frenzy or mesmeric trance they're in and they then want to do a different thing but unlike what it is that is expected of them by god unlike he who or she who goes back to god like david after sinning with bathsheba and so with a contrite and a broken spirit being like god i'm sorry for what i did what can i do to make amends they try to hide that they did anything at all they want to put sand over the body that they have buried in the ground and then put stuff in a 3d printer to make a new human being that looks like the one that they killed they literally try to reorder or refashion events so as to favor them it's written in God's word that a good reputation is like silver and gold. So essentially you need to work like a dog to preserve your reputation. It is important. When you lose it, you lose basically everything. People add you reviled my name long ago. And as a result of my name being reviled, I cannot get a job in corporate South Africa today. That is the importance of a good reputation. Without it, you can literally lose your whole lifestyle, your whole well-being. Your whole livelihood can be ripped from underneath your feet because you've been disreputed in the market. Right, yeah. Well, I've done nothing the past 10 years but attempt to recover my reputation to myself. The way that I have attempted to recover that re reputation to myself has been through this ministry of mine. I have come up here with either in, either in my blog, my written blog or this um, audio visual ministry that is on YouTube or TikTok or Facebook or whatever. Right now I'm just on, on YouTube however. I have come here to basically share my life that I have been experiencing in all of this sorrow all of these years. To evidence to people that I am innocent, I'm above reproach, that all these accusations against my person have been wrong. And I am succeeding to essentially flip the narrative, to turn the tables. People are now coming to the understanding that I have been done dirty. It's taken work for me to recover my reputation to myself. The burden of proof has been on me to recover my reputation to myself. And I imagine I am succeeding quite healthily to achieve that. Why? Because I'm in Christ. If God be for us, who can be against us? The Lord knew that they reviled my name. And he's the one that promised that he's going to restore to me all that all those years which the locust has stolen so basically lab these people who lied about me are now in some kind of dangerously hot scorching like excruciatingly infernus waters because of Tabaori, my vindication is their comeuppance my vindication is their prosecution my vindication is their indictment they are facing essentially humiliation embarrassment disgrace for having done this to a completely innocent woman. So with God recovering my reputation to me, you are obviously going to get some plotters and some schemers on the left and on the right in these uneasy streets of South Africa, thoroughly 
imaginative in their machinations that they can concoct brand spanking new ways to revile me. But what goes so they've been reviling me so kill is kati bang seba bam pua hampi and they've not had my back. They are thoroughly like Joseph's brothers. So they stand to be disgraced when I get vindicated. That's why they are standing back doing nothing. They're aloof, they're complacent, they're apathetic, they are divorced and disinterested. They're blase concerning my cause because of the fact that my vindication is their comeuppance. I cannot say that enough. Now, if it is in your best interest for someone to never ever breathe or never ever be vindicated, you then are going to walk in vain machinations out here concocting brand spanking new ways to sin. My family has an interest that I should be maintained disreputed. God, however, has no such interest. But given that they have that interest, given that this blooper of a cousin has an interest in disreputing me or maintaining my disrepute, far be it from her or over her dead body, which indeed it appears one of these days shall be a reality, for her to be disreputed with me being the person in question here that is vindicated. Just like everybody else, oh, kichwa bonga. She's being kichwad, kichwad now. It's like they are telling themselves she's already reviled and disreputed already. The world low-key kind of thinks that she is rubbish. So granted that the planet already is of the imagination that she is rubbish. And by perception management, we are therefore with home ground advantage. We are automatically favored by mere virtue of her being presently underestimated let me juice that let me see if i can't drain it for what it's worth and in so juicing and draining it cause the finishing off of umfazi that needs not any such finishing off here's this woman that is out here trying to undo umsebenzi that god almighty jesus on high has worked in my life for 10 years to recover like god has said a good reputation is more precious than silver and gold and so therefore understanding that the reviling of my person is not something that I could afford to be maintained indefinitely. So he went right straight to work. As soon as I lost everything, as soon as Daniel in the, was thrown in the lion's den, as soon as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in the fire, Jesus went and rubbed his hands together and started to plan to recover my reputation. It has taken so far 10 years and counting. I've been saved for 13 years, 10 of which have been persecuted. And from the date of the first reviling of my person, God has been putting brick by brick, foundation by foundation, ever since then, to rebuild my name. And I am at a place now where can't nobody move. I am obviously innocent, and so all they can lean on, those who want to keep me uh, disreputed, is burying me. That's why they have invested in cloaking spells. That's why they've invested in um, invisibility spells to make sure nobody watches my content. And that is why some have even gone so far as to pay YouTube a handsome fee to essentially shadow ban the living daylights out of me into obscurity. Similarly too, with Facebook and TikTok, I could go on. All they can do now is hide me because my reputation now speaks for itself. My sobriety now speaks for itself. My se my, my um getting my sanity now speaks for itself because there was a time that they, when they were literally trying to claim that I am crazy. My hard work also now speaks for itself because there was also yet again another insane time where they thoroughly imagined that they could succeed with calling me lazy. I have got work essentially that is now speaking for me. Do you understand what I'm saying? So all they can do is bury me, hide me. Now herein lies one such barrier, one such hider, one such casket keeper, one such insister on an heinous act. Obviously called out for rubbish. I mean, like, who gives a person a job and then rescinds, right? Like, you are obviously a rubbish human being on that day. But you're dealing with a person hidden by the entire South Africa. You're dealing with a person out here buried in some ditch and some, albeit being the glory of gold. Yeah, that's what's good. Mm. So, I mean, of course, you are going to work to the nail to use that situation for what it is. You are going to work tooth and nail to try and exploit an already disreputed woman. So what is the thing that Karabo out here is suffering from? People lied about her. Babu Lemaga, rubbish. Hotela on a foot. Type rubbish, right? Yeah. Babu Lemaga, Bachubana. They disreputed Omoyum Tana and she was completely innocent. Krenshap, Abena Maitseo. Habana, any respect, even in the slightest. They are demeaning. Mm. That's what's good. Yeah. Given that my reputation has been somewhat vindicated uh, but in, an, in a very unsung capacity i'm still very largely underground lomundu lona sought to make me look like i am hasty i mean i wrote the song and Niles barkley i rewrote 
a song yeah Nas Nas Barkley crazy basically speaking about how these people try to make me look cray cray out in these streets and it goes a little something like this if i can remember the lyrics properly i remember when i remember i remember when they said that i lost my mind that i'm nothing a peasant that lived in haste even my emotions were an echo were they erased Woo -woo -woo. then they left me bare without care even stayed out of touch and it wasn't because i didn't know enough Ooh, uh, uh, uh. It's just that he knew too much So they call me crazy They call me crazy Yeah, basically what that says Let me say it again without singing it I remember when I remember when they said that I lost my mind That I'm nothing A peasant that lived in haste That even my emotions were an echo So essentially I was ignored Where they erased me from the face of the earth Then they went out of the way to leave me bare Butt naked without care And even stayed out of touch and it wasn't because he didn't know enough. It's that he knew too much. So basically, they hated the prophetic gift that God gave me that exposed them for their rabiosh. And so after doing all that, they then called me crazy. Yeah, I remember when. I remember when they said that I lost my mind. That I'm nothing a peasant that lived in haste. Even my emotions were an echo where they erased. Zoom. Consent said, say. Then they left me bare, without care, even stayed out of touch. And it wasn't because he didn't know enough. See, did see, is that he knew too much. So they called me crazy. And it goes on and goes on and goes on. Okay? Yeah. That whole thing of them saying that I am nothing but a peasant. So, a no brainer woman that lived in haste. They've been trying to make me look like Nikola Jaji. That I threw my whole life away, I threw my whole career away, that I was just irresponsible and a diva that could not be uh, negotiated with, that could not be spoken to because I was pompous, I was arrogant. They wanted to make me look conceited and self-important. And in all of my pomp and, uh, and arrogance and my diva disposition, therefore, got humbled. They want to make me look like I lost everything because I was arrogant when I was rather comprehensively innocent. They want to say that I did not care about um Swam, that ni Whoa! When I was done dirty in fashions that can be evidentially supported in a court of law. Like, the evidence is heavy. Like, as in was, dossiers upon dossiers of evidence in favor of me. Like, I am so obviously innocent to anybody rocking up in a neutral tribunal where nobody has been bribed, nobody has been influenced negatively, literally in a vacuum of neutral judges. They would go over my case and consider it bizarre that I lost my CCMA case, that I lost my case at MTN, that I got fired at all, and everything else that happened would cause an honest panel of judges that is within a vacuum not being influenced by any other factor outside to wag their heads on some I don't know how this woman lost her case. It is so bizarre that when I appealed for the CCMA, the guy that I was appealing at at the desk, at the front, looked at my case at face value, at face glance, just from the top document, and was like, Bamu Braibile law advocate this advocate of the ccma that ruled against you has been bribed just at face value and then he tabled my appeal following which it was ignored and i still lost again because at the end of the day he was the frontline consultant stuff has to go emuva and emuva by bui sabati failed and then i had to go to the labor court that ignored my case uh, i went to the Legal aid board ignored me where they did not ignore me. It's bizarre what happened to me. Obviously, strings were pulled, but the documentation, the red tape, the paper trail is in favor of me. It is what they call exculpatory. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I am vindicatable in a most violent capacity from very early on. Yet, there are people who, because I lost my case at the CCMA and everybody has been ignoring me, leaning on behavioral psychology and how people tend to think that everybody cannot be wrong, ignoring documentation that is in support rather in favor of a person, they then go on right ahead and say rubbish of this nature. That I just threw away my job. Oh, the guy that I told you guys about, um, 
or that like I, I had a little fling it wasn't even a fling goodness whatever like I liked him he had a girlfriend he, uh, he had a girlfriend I had a boyfriend and we were sort of kind of ogling at each other uh, type establishment thing that one I'm not even gonna get into detail he's irrelevant he's vestigial he's also a blooper yeah I had a dream of him I, he's busy watching my content i don't even know how he found it okay because he wasn't among the people that were out here ogling at my story but that's the thing he was a cyber stalker so of course he would be following me around today he would have found my content anywho anyhow that rando buffoon i had a, a dream the other day i told you i don't i don't share much of what i see about him right because like i said blooper he's just a vestigial he's a tonsil that's all he is yeah he's not that important i had a dream of him saying will say that a person that knows who they passed up a good thing will say that an individual that does not want to basically embrace or take in their stride the reality the fact the veracity of the fact that she's the one who got away like you passed up a perfectly viable woman yeah you are going to come up with all different kinds of tall stories to help yourself feel better about your crashed up decision about your vehicle accidented decision about your toe stop freaking decision you are going to feel like trash for it enough for you to concoct or manufacture philosophies that will help you feel better about your like i said toe stab decision so with people saying of me that i was just hasty and i decimated my own career and the whole world believing them being disinterested in documentation supporting my case rather i'm now trying to lean on that wave ride it like it's a carpet and they are making like aladdin yeah that's what's good they are riding the wave of the false reputation that has been created against me that i was hasty that i was just it's open for the cat whatever moving on yeah uh people want to that that false, false reputation of saying what a kijaji wait you guys <laughs> The only thing that can make a person all of a sudden overnight become that which is comprehensively self-destructive when before they were the stuff of homeostasis before they were the stuff of equilibrium before they were the stuff of stuff of temperance before they were the stuff of chill like umuntu that has just historically been so relaxed in a state of responsibility if they're going to overnight suddenly change and become irresponsible without their being any factor to account for why they went irresponsible in other words they did not suddenly lose a loved one they did not suddenly endure a trauma event they did not suddenly uh you know start taking some kind of hard drugs or whatnot when there is nothing to account for why a perfectly sober under normal circumstances extremely responsible person going irresponsible overnight you need to interrogate if at all they have not been falsely accused only mental insanity can render a person that is under normal circumstances always dotting their eyes and crossing their t's to suddenly start dropping the ball there tends to be something to account for it people do not just suddenly change like that overnight and i was accused of the kinds of changes in human behavior that can be preceded by trauma events so gargantuan like losing your whole family in one big fat plane crash then only you start becoming an alcoholic of note dropping the ball dropping out of school throwing everything away because literally you don't have anybody left in your family except you or maybe you started doing drugs and now you're dropping the ball you are a straight a student and now you are failing abysmally with there to be nothing to account for kids start failing at school because parents divorce there tends to be an event to account for why under heaven something suddenly fell apart but with me everything was maintained equal in this vacuum that was my life and yet i suddenly apparently allegedly without taking any drugs and without losing my mind i apparently allegedly went allegedly went irresponsible a kid that has never even bunked a single day of school when i was in high school was out here accused of dropping out of university i was accused of suddenly walking into my offices at mtn where i worked and insubordinating my bosses and disrespecting everybody until i lost a career like i essentially apparently lost my mind without anything to account for where, why i lost my mind everything of mine was operating perfectly my family was fine my job was fine my school was fine i had not lost any loved ones i was not taking any narcotics no substances nothing nothing to account for why i was suddenly accused of that kind of heinous irresponsibility and nobody was actually interrogating it or investigating it i guess i keep irresponsible i was never the kind of person to not be at work on monday from babalas i was always such a good kid and yet i suddenly threw my whole career away according to people 
I apparently went irresponsible overnight and I was now all of a sudden nicely hasty. Nekele chaji. Njefela ya ho papa. Ya ho di datela boka mo soka ufela mo mole watli. Hore lilo dota. Lebo kobaka. Apparently, allegedly. That's what I did. Willingly njefela out of the blue. Nga yo lasa i karri engi seben zile like insha. Nga yo lasi degree that literally made me sweat bullets. Kenze ke ba la ke askolong ke tshore ke tlhogo ke sa robale ke patala chalte enga e kima kima e kana ke nka di personal loan ko stena bank le ko FNP le ko net bank all the banks of South Africa di di ntse ba ke ntse ke pise ke kokota e seng ho investor mara o long ka di loan just so i can pay for my school fees and then one day jefela i'm gonna drop out of university ke setse ka one module to graduate one module after ke kokota mo di bank e ntse South Africa ho re ke tlo ba kokota for school fees ai askis that's what i've been accused of I'm a university dropout because one day I just dropped the ball. Yeah, the imiti witchcraft is or is or some flames, y'all. It'll, it'll people who do witchcraft, like I said, they're always trying to do the impossible. Hmm? They will actually try to make a dog, a cat, a fish, a cow. They they will think who they can take a perfectly reasonable, sober, sound, responsible person and make them throw themselves away overnight. Cause Lenja le ipogile. He just rocked up like a bat out of hell out of nowhere and made a decision to go to na uzo jola. Nenja er ravaza gile esi bot mo mostratenya HIV onzo le mosadi wa huito kome. Ole a chicken jefela ya huito tora. You always have a lint roller in your purse the way you can't stand even the smallest little amount of fur. Mo kudunya hal. Marajuana ngoto tu alenja et suto et suto baning et serianing et shrebening ya se boto et gulanya ngolaza with the reputation in these streets in Jefela ya kuti ravaza overnight like they are thoroughly they try to marry me off to some of the worst little miscreants and psychopaths of South Africa and then they imagine that in so far as I can be violently poverty stricken for long enough maybe my standards will drop to a point where like I said all the guys that every girl is out of vomiting when they walk in the past the past the room for a husband that's what witches think they can achieve they think they can make a person lose their minds to a point where everything out here in these streets because I don't know anything else that you can write home about. They think they can throw a person's entire personality suite to their dogs. And I've been spending an entire decade, Christ in me, Christ for me, has spent a whole decade rebuilding that which they crashed and burned in ways that were obvious that you are out here afflicting an innocent woman. But the world hates disciples, you see. The world can't stand Christianity and Christians. They are unbelieving. And if they claim to be believers, they're not biblical, they're not Bible-based. And so therefore, the mistreatment, therefore the mistreatment of a Christian is often very, very bizarre. It's bizarre. Hence why it's written in 1 Peter 4 that you must consider it pure joy when you go through trials of different kinds. Also, don't consider it strange. That wasn't James, the, the one you're pure joy. Now in 1 Peter 4, verse 4, um, don't consider it strange when you go through trials of different kinds because the trials that we go through will indeed be just that strange like the world is bizarre towards believers in in observable capacities in ways that are easy to detect and yet nonetheless ignored we are ominously disregarded despite it being in nobody's best interest to continue with the narrative that they are trying to fashion against us we are just what is the word that I'm looking for? Gratuitously violated. Like, it's always so unwarranted the way that we get treated. That evidence is that we belong to the one true God and that the world is born hating God and that there is a force, forces of darkness that are to account for why mankind can sometimes so lose their minds. Hey, we, uh, it's written in God's word that we war not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, principalities, and spiritual wickedness in high places, authorities. Mm. We war against spirits, and spirits are what make people act in bizarre capacities. So that's why people, when they are on a psychedelic trip, are to be hallucinating seeing entities, and then people think that they're crazy. No, they're not, they're not crazy. They're seeing actual things in other dimensions, however, these things have not been embraced as feasible to be cited by men. And so for those reasons, they're written off as crazy and high on a psychedelic trip. Yeah, well, I mean, when bizarre things that are true, that are being seen in other dimensions that are not visible to the naked eye of a sober human being, suddenly start to manifest in the waking realm, then of course there will be bizarre treatment of people that these entities are at enmity with. So therefore, there is a severity of bizarre mistreatment of Christians. because we are the ones that are making war with these entities that people who are tripping on psychedelics are just see yeah we experience anomalous weird unbelievable phenomena that other people in this world would write off as the stuff of mystery 
we are mysteriously mistreated as Christians. It's bizarre. So because of how bizarre and horribly mistreated we are, as a, because of all of this, the Christian must then stay and stand strong. We are to be stabilized in the recognition that we must not consider it strange when we go through trials of different kinds. As believers, we are to be maintained in a we walk by faith and not by sight mentality when the world is weird towards us. And so because the world so hates disciples, mean, I was met with obvious blemishing of my name, like embellishments of my name were so obvious. And yet people in a very bizarre capacity chose to ignore that which was a glaring obviousness of my innocence. People chose to disregard the glaring obviousness of my innocence. And so I then decided to hunker down and basically look stark face, like stock straight into the eyes of Jesus and don't take my eyes off until he fixes my reputation. And it's taken all these years for me to get to this particular juncture, but it's all been resisted the entire time. People have still been bizarre the whole time. I've been rudely treated kichikiwa by random strangers the entire time because they have run with a narrative that is obviously untrue that was manufactured all those years ago. And here it is that now we're chilling in 2024 and this lackluster blooper of a cousin is thoroughly imaginative of the fact that she is going to succeed in her machinations and making me look like I am what I've always been hasty. I spoke too soon that like proper I said that whole loopy long winding thing to get to this particular juncture that random lackluster female that's out here making lack of a vestigial organ in the body like the appendix albeit flaring up and giving me a whole bunch of grief it's nonetheless ignorable if it's not there she's that thing she wants that's what's good to utilize the fact that generally over these past 10 years people have gone on right ahead to conclude of me that the reason I lost my career was because I was hasty was because I suddenly one day woke up and became irresponsible like a junkie. Like I suddenly woke up and dropped out of a university degree that I had worked blood, sweat and tears to get to the final year of having still owed institutions that money in order for me to finish my degree and then I'm just gonna throw it in the ground left with nothing but one module to graduate. Like my case is freaking bizarre. Anyone that wants to go and grab a magnifying glass and study it deeply would come to the conclusion that Christian persecution as it is described in the scriptures is true. That the world hates disciples. That people will throw you out the synagogues. That the days coming when those who kill you will do so thinking they're doing a service to God. That like Papa, that we war not against flesh and blood. Like spirits must be to account why to, for why it is that human beings are so decidedly ignorant of the things of God. They choose to disregard God at their own peril, even when it is not in their own best interest. Like something that is obviously going to end badly for them. They walk in that feat because it appears something else is controlling them. The God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers. That's what's happening in my life. And so it is no wonder that this other masquerader as an angel of light, the servant of the devil, is out here trying to do the exact same thing that, they, that the devil has been doing all along. It's written in God's word in the book of Ecclesiastes that there is nothing new under the sun. Satan is an ancient spirit and all throughout ancient history he's been doing the same thing. He's not about to change his mind. He's not about to change his strategy because it's been working swimmingly all along to ransack, to deceive, and to send people to the flames of hell. So this cheeky out here rocking up with a strategy to out here make me look irresponsible even though the evidence is stark, clear, exculpated in favor of rather my innocence yeah she's gonna do that because it's what they've been doing all this time all these 10 years i've been accused of like, all these 10 years i've been uh, accused of indiscretion do you understand what i'm saying even though the evidence was starkly in favor of me Kili innocent guys i don't smoke i don't drink i get we see i like how nothing taught on me that is accusable indeed it's written in god's word that no one can lay a charge against god's elect but man how they try man how they try to concoct charges jesus christ endured a whole tribunal a whole trial before pilate and they set barabbas free this dude was so innocent that pilate out here in angst was like but like why do you want to let this guy go until he brought out the baddest criminal in the game to see if people will sober up and instead they were like free barabbas crucify him crucify him who can lay a charge against God's elect? Ain't nobody, but my oh my, how they trump up charges anyway. And they send a person all the way to Golgotha. They just do that with no evidence in favor of them. But you see, mm, 
groupthink when they're in a tribal mentality out you're getting juiced by some kind of a frenzy mesmerized by one thought as it is enticed into their members by demons habalida when they are swaying left to right in one unison thought of a of a chaotic nature there's nothing you can tell a frenzied crowd that is frenetically out here chanting crucify him crucify him there is nothing you can do to make them not do that silly thing so christ says forgive them father for they have no clue under heaven what they're doing mm. that's what's good yeah that's been my innocence but you see no servant is greater than his master if they persecuted jesus christ they will do it to me so i am enduring the same level of a barbaric heinous bizarre charges trumped up against me despite a provable innocence yet that is nonetheless however just completely ignored disregarded and all the way up until golgotha i'm out here being insisted upon perishing by somebody that said that i irresponsibly threw myself into the dogs and that's why i'm just such a big dog and she's the big fat chunky magnanimous rando that's actually gonna award a favor to the little dog in these streets that is unappreciative because i'm such a good girl this woman is trying to make herself look altruistic at the expense of my reputation which is more precious more precious than silver and gold to a point of jesus christ actually in these streets rebuilding it over a 10-year period yeah, yeah it took like one little funny day on a crazy little peel of thunder afternoon for all of my future to be destroyed and yet it's taken a decade to recover me to some kind of semblance of obviously she is innocent. And this chick wants to go and unravel all that hard work. She wants to go and undermine the work of Christ to restore my reputation. Sisters, you are a blooper. Vestigial tonsillitis be like. She wants to rock up all up in the streets of my particular corner house, all right? And then say, You spoke too soon. Karabo, bloma, make like a flowerizi gengi here. Lawan do that keep on inventing new ways to sin. They sit in their corners with their machinations and they plot and they scheme. Nike batla baby, let's go to the poor. Kifilangara without the baby, le, how na muto otlo richang any kind of valuable conviction? So, how do you know how to la morna jesu ne ke filang ka ge ha ona motho o nang le understanding so a re feng batho understanding se ke le la bona let's get into the first is in psalm proverb is it proverb or psalm ke proverb or ke psalm ke bi pesale ma all i know is that ke a ho qala ya is in ke a long among the first it must be the psalms ke bi pesale ma no ke bi pesale ma guys and I say that because it just feels like it's the Psalms. It has to be. It is. I told you, Mshil. So I'm already proverbsing for now. It's the Psalms. I want you to understand what is keep up on my heart line. When when they are out of blood and they scheme and they ransack and decimate against God's kids, how God feels about all all such activity. In a dirty little room with lightning strike and peals of thunder, go rumbling and rumbling and rumbling as they've been manufactured by weather by, by cloud seeding. And then there's like a light going on and off because of like uh, entities, satanic activity going on. And then out of that dark, dingy room, and then decides this is how I'm going to humiliate the daughter of God. <laughs> this is what God has to say about you. In in Pesalimaya Bubedi. The second a psalm it reads let us commence amen why do the nations rage and the people's plot in vain the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the lord and against his anointed saying let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us he who sits in the heavens laughs the other day the lord holds them in derision then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury saying as for me i have set my king on zion my holy hill i will tell of the decree the lord said to me you are my son today i have begotten you i love this psalm because it is a flag a flat out apologetic passage against modalism against anyone that does not believe in the holy trinity 